So what made you want to get into football? So um, I've always loved football since I was a little kid. Um, I have two older brothers, they both played football. Um, I sort of looked up to them a lot, you know, watched them play and sort of was very attracted by the sport. It's a beautiful game, um, kind of just the way it's played. And also, um, I vividly remember when I was younger, uh, my, mo my mom grew up in Israel, um, so I sort of had a, a European culture per se. Her father used to take her to football matches all the time and she would tell me stories about it. And um, we used to watch particularly uh, Valencia play from the Spanish League and uh, there was a player, Pablo Aymar, um, kind of had like similar hair to me, he had like really curly long hair. My mom always used to say like, watch him, you should be like him. Um, so I sort of, you know, through, through him I guess, um, through watching those matches I sort of fell in love with the game. Um, and just really, you know, once I started touching the ball for the first time it was just kind of magical and um, the whole world opened up to me, you know, every time I stepped on the pitch, even at a young age, it was like, I forgot about everything. I mean, I know when we were younger, we didn't have much uh, stress and whatnot going on in our lives, yeah. but um, it was still a pretty, pretty amazing feeling to be able to just get away from everything and uh, sort of do something that really makes you happy. So, so when did you leave the USA? So uh, I played football competitive when I when I was about nine, eight or nine years old. I sort of realized, you know, I played in sort of the uh, the common leagues that everyone plays in, and then I sort of realized that I, I this was something you know maybe I had a talent for or a knack for. Um, and I started to think, you know, what my options were, maybe join a club team, um, you know, sort of seeing what, just looking at my brothers were doing, they, they had joined club teams as well. Um, so when I, was, when I was 13 years old, I was identified on the U14 U.S. national team, um, which was kind of a big deal, kind of an eye-opener for me, like, wow, you know, maybe this is something, I'm still really young, but um, maybe this is something that I should pursue. Um, and I actually was fortunate enough to... Um, be invited to join the academy of 1860 Munich, uh, which is a now a second second division team in, in the German Bundesliga. Um, they used to be first. They were they were demoted um, years back um, for some different reasons. But anyways, um, I was enjoyed, invited to join their youth team, um, which is known to be one of the best in Germany, one of the best in, in Europe actually, at developing players. Were you supported by a family? My parents were incredible. Um, looking back, I can't believe they actually supported me in that. Um, at the time it seemed like a no-brainer, you know, I was invited to this amazing club, um, you know, of course they let me go, but looking back, you know, having, being a little bit older now and having a perspective on that, um, it's pretty in in insane that they let me go, especially by myself, um, but I think that's just a testament of how supportive they were and, you know, all the driving and, and commitment they made, I don't think any, any of this would have been possible without them, so. What was your next step after 1860 Munich? So after 1860, um, you know, basically growing up in America, I, education was sort of something that I valued. Um, my parents always used to preach, um, you know, football only lasts so long, um, and there's a life after football, which, you know, I realize now. But uh, basically, you know, in order to go to college, um, I had to be back in the States. And basically, once you sign a professional contract anywhere overseas in the United States, um, you lose your NCAA eligibility, basically your eligibility to play um, sports in college. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of a decision I had to make, you know, do I want to stay in Europe and pursue, you know, playing professionally here now, or do I want to go back to the States and, and get a college education, you know, play college soccer, and, and then try to make it back in Europe, which is what I ended up doing. I ended up moving back to the United States, um, ended up playing uh, with some top universities here, and then, you know, ended up going back to Israel to play with the club. So uh, you mentioned Israel. What, yeah. what, what was the yeah? So um, Israel was kind of my, my last straw, um, you know, in the in the professional level. Um, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned before, my mom's Israeli, so I actually uh, have a dual citizenship. Um, and uh, so you know, it was it was a, it was a realistic move for me. You know, they didn't have, I wasn't considered a foreigner, so a lot of the times they reserved some of the bigger money moves for a lot of the foreigners, a few of the designated players on the team. But I was actually Israeli, so. Um, that worked out. Um, it was good, you know, I enjoyed playing there. I, I think it was a good level for me and sort of a good style for me, um, you know, being a little bit more technical and, and not, not as physical. Um, having said that, I was there um, a few summers ago during sort of what was a very sort of escalated political climate. Um, and believe it or not, there were, there were missiles that were being fired towards Israel at the time. Um, Fortunately, I was in Tel Aviv and never really experienced anything too crazy, um, but it was pretty surreal, you know, I mean, the sirens would go off 
um, in the city. And um, that basically meant you had to get into shelter because there was a missile being fired towards you. Um, and Israel has, has what's called the Iron Dome, um, which is basically this huge dome that shoots down all the missiles. Um, and the success rate is pretty high, but um, nonetheless, it's, it's pretty surreal. You know, you kind of just have to carry on through life like everything is normal. Um, and I ended up, that, I think that was one of the major reasons I ended up moving back to the States. It's just kind of, I felt like I had this weight on my shoulder at all times. Like, you know, if I want to go outside and get some lunch, it's like kind of planning my day around when these missiles are going to be fired. Um, and uh, I think subconsciously that was, that was one of the biggest reasons I came back, to be honest. Um, How did your experience differ from your time in Europe to your time in the States? Before I moved to Europe initially, um, you know, my game was, was very much based on pace and, and speed and, and skill, and, and going to Europe was very, very humbling. Um, I mean, these kids were far more technical than, than I ever was, or than the kids I was playing with in the States. Um, just set a whole new standard and precedent for football than I had been used to. Um, so that, that was definitely very eye-opening. Um, I remember actually before, before I moved to Europe, years before, um, I had the opportunity to train with Ajax um, in the Netherlands, which is you probably know it's one of the best youth systems in the world. Um, and those kids were just on another level. Like literally it was like watching a ping pong match and I was just sort of standing in the middle like, what do I do, you know? Um, and now here you are studying photography in London. Talk me through that transition. So um, kind of a dramatic shift um, in professions, I guess, um, even though you know, I'm a student now. But um, I've always really been interested in the arts and, and photography uh, particularly. You know, I was fortunate enough, my parents, um, sort of exposed me to those things as I was younger when I was growing up. Um, always going to galleries and whatnot. And, and I don't know, there was sort of just a turning point where I realized it was sort of maybe more than a hobby and an interest, something I wanted to pursue. And I think that was overlapping with football um, for a bit in my last few years. Um, in university as well, I did some work with photography that kind of, that was actually the first time I picked up a camera it was in college. Um, but I did some work with photography that I think made me realize that this could be something that I end up doing down the line. Um, and it came a little bit sooner than I expected, but um, yeah, it kind of just felt right, you know. Um, I ended up deciding I was going to try to get my master's in photography and apply to some different schools, and uh, fortunately, um, London seemed like a, an exciting opportunity, and uh, here I am. Are there any plans to go professional once more? A lot of people have been asking me that. Um, Probably not, but you never know. I mean, um, recently I've been sort of really eager actually to, to kind of pursue a little bit of a higher level again. Um, you know, it's not going to be anything too crazy, but I think perhaps maybe joining like a, you know, a fifth division side perhaps in, in England would be something reasonable um, and realistic. And uh, yeah, you, may, you know, maybe, maybe that's, that's something that I'll decide to do down the line.